Here's how I kitbashed a custom Sand Shrike Space Marine. As always, all good ideas come from a little inspiration. The Maker's Cult released these Deco Bots. I thought they'd make a great base for some Space Marines. I imported a body into Blender, set the geometry to origin, and then rotated it into a standing position. Then I thought about what makes a Space Marine a Space Marine. The most important parts are a helmet, shoulder pads, and the classic backpack. I feel like if I have some form of all three of them, then the kit bash will read as a space marine and not just some sci-fi soldier. I found some stuff I liked on Thingiverse and Cults 3D and imported them into Blender. To get the kit bash started, I need to scale the arms and body up. I used the heads as a reference, because they were most likely to scale. I'm not a fan of the normal bulky look that Space Marines have, so I scaled down the shoulder pads. I also decided to go with the helmet that had a visor. These guys are going to be walking through the desert, so I thought that fit better. I also just thought it was cooler. I'm also a big fan of soldiers carrying equipment around, so I added a few pouches and bags. These all needed to be scaled, rotated, and moved into place. And I'm done. Yeah! Or at least, so I thought. I took a picture and while I was looking at it, I thought it needed a little bit more detail. I then used the built-in photo editing in my phone and scribbled ideas onto the picture. One thing I drew was a little light on his backpack that I ended up liking. I went back into Blender, imported a light, and clipped it into his backpack. It didn't look very natural, so I got a box file, clipped that into the backpack, and then used it as an attachment point for the light. Next, it was time to add some attachments onto his gun. I copied the gun arm and then rotated it so it was flat. I did this because it's easier to line up new objects if they're perfectly flat. Using the rotate tools in the top right corner helps greatly. I want to up my sculpting skills, so here goes nothing. The first sculpt was a scope. This did not go well, but I might as well show you what I did. To find and import simple shapes, press shift plus A and go into the meshes tab. I added a cylinder mesh, flipped it sideways, and scaled it to roughly the right shape. Then to make indents, I copied it, pasted it, scaled the new copy down, and using boolean difference, I cut a hole into the big cylinder. I did the same with the other side of the scope, and then added two vertical cylinders to connect it to the gun. I was not happy with the result, so we'll come back to the scope later. Next was a suppressor. This is a pretty simple build. It's made with two cylinders. One to go over the barrel, then one slightly smaller extending from that point. Then just cut into the end with the same boolean difference technique we used on the scope. Since this went decently well, my confidence was sky high. I tackled the scope again. This time I used a reference image. I tried to copy the look of this red dot scope. Since on a miniature, scopes are very small, I didn't want to try to get too fancy with detail. I feel like tubes and squares will work just fine. I just went around and added the main geometry that I saw in the reference pictures. It's easy and uses simple shapes, but I'm very happy with the result. I sculpted a flashlight in the same way. Again, this is about the extent of my sculpting skills in Blender, but it's a start. I grouped everything together for ease of rotating and moving, and then copied the old arm's rotation and moved the gun into place. Next, I brought in a Primaris scaled model and made sure that my new kit bash was the right height. Turns out he was very tall. It's good to check this out before printing. You can also just measure a physical model and make a box that's the right height and use it as a ruler. And now I'm done. Finally! Uh, actually wait, 
I thought the character was lacking some pizzazz. I was inspired by a Pete the Wargamer video and decided to make my guy into a communication specialist. I imported a Vox backpack and clipped it into the existing backpack, making sure not to cover up too much. I also brought in a cool arm for the Maker's Cult's Guitari guys. I like robotic arms and it has a hologram he might be talking to or receiving orders from. It checked all the boxes. Also I rotated his head a little to make it look like he was looking at the hologram. I still wanted him to have a bolter, but since these arms were joined into one solid mesh instead of just grouped or saved as one object, I couldn't do the separate by loose parts technique like we've done in previous videos. I had to do this the old fashioned way, with boxes and boolean differences. When cutting the arm off, it was making these weird open sections in the model. I tried to fill these by going into edit mode, holding shift plus alt, clicking on some of the edges, and then pressing F to fill. But this was tedious and I didn't want to have to do this for every area we cut into. So I decided to do what I do with all of my problems. Ignore it and slap a band-aid on it. That band-aid was to sculpt a grip and cover the holes. I did this by pressing shift plus A and selecting a box mesh, then scaling it and moving it into place. Then I went into object properties and added a bevel modifier. Then I copied that object and created some ridges along the grip. Then I grouped the whole thing again and moved it back into place. I had to move the shoulder pad a little bit as well because it was clipping weirdly. I also added a sphere under his neck, just in case his head wasn't in contact with the torso. Better safe than sorry. And with that, the digital part of the kit bash was complete. Uh, however, when I went into Chitobox, there was a strange error with the mesh that totally didn't have to do with how he cut off the arm earlier. When you have these weird dark bits on your model appearing, it means that you have flipped normals. Or simply put, it means that parts of your model are inside out. I've solved this before by copying and pasting a supported mini, flipping one of their normals, and then overlapping them. I like cutting corners, but I do not recommend doing that. So this time, to fix the problem, I went back into Blender, selected the model, went into edit mode, and pressed A to select all of the vertices. Then I went to Mesh, then Normals, and lastly Recalculate Outside or Inside. It's sort of anticlimactic, but it works. The worst part of digital kit bashing is supporting your new mini. I have a more in-depth tutorial if you're interested. Also, 3D Printing Pro has a whole series on this that is amazing. I highly recommend watching it if you're having trouble with supporting your own minis. Digital kit bashing is a lot of trial and error and little tweaks. I found it very helpful taking pictures and videos as I went on. It can really help looking at it from a different screen or angle. Okay. Finally, the digital kit bash is done. Really? Yes, really. Really, really? Yes, yes, really, really. Really, really? There isn't much to do on the physical side of things. I didn't add enough supports on the suppressor, so I sanded it down flat. I also rolled some snakes, flattened them with a toothpick, and then wrapped them around the mini to act as straps and break up the silhouette of the gun. They are still a little thick for my liking, but I'm getting better at making them, which is the important part. I also had grand plans of using some blue transparent resin that I hadn't used before to keep the hologram see-through, but I didn't adjust my printing settings, so my first printing attempt didn't pan out. Luckily. The hologram printed out correctly, so I snipped off the red one, and I'll glue the transparent blue one on after painting. And like that, the whole kit bash is done. One sand shrike marine ready to do whatever the poop a sand shrike does. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments.
All right. Bye-bye.